Greetings, welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. Today we're going to tie some classic wet flies. This is a, a vice squad kit for coming session. Uh, these are kind of old timey flies, but uh, back when the materials were all natural and the flies were more suggestive than imitative, uh, they caught a lot of fish and they still will. So, what you want is a good stout hook. Uh, you can tie these a little bit bigger. This is a Dairiki 075. Mustad makes a 3906B, which is classically a good wet fly hook. Shorter shank is okay. I'm going to use an 8 dot thread, a fine thread, so I got a little more control. Don't really need terrible uh, strength with it, so go a little fine. Now the starting point is meant to save some room up front where I'm going to tie in the soft hackle and the wing. So starting the thread there is a reminder of where my proportions need to be. Now for tails, you can use <coughs> fibers off of a hen hackle. Here's a regular old soft hackle hen neck. I've been liking these feathers off of the tips of turkey feathers, but I found a material I like even better, and this is a secondary feather off of a partridge skin. This is one of those feathers you don't really think you have a use for, but they're well marked and you can see how soft they are. It's going to pull out a few of those. I measure them so they extend back maybe a hook shank length, maybe a little less. Now we're going to be dubbing a, a rough spiky material over it so you don't have to worry about perfect wraps here. But for practice, make touching wraps and keep them as smooth as you can. Because some of these patterns, if you get into it, you'll be tying with floss bodies and a smooth underbody will be very important. Now you see how the thread's hanging pretty close to the hook barb, which is a common place to stop. Wet flies seem to look better if it's a little farther forward. So my, the back of my fly is going to be part way between the barb and the hook point. Now you can rib with just about anything. Uh, wire's the easiest to work with. Uh, crystal flash really keeps it shine. And we're going to use the old classic oval tinsel. And we're going to tie it in at the front just as a good habit. And we're going to do the best we can to tie it, tie it in on the underside of the hook. Now those wraps weren't very tight so I can reach up with my thumb and get it right on the bottom. And the reason for doing that is to create or save a flat platform on the top of the shank for when we tie in the wing. Alright, now for dubbing, this is kind of a gold ribbed hair's ear, although I've substituted a few materials. Gold ribbed hair's ear, wet fly. I've got some, just want some spiky dubbing. Squirrel looks great. This is shaved off of just a natural rabbit skin. But it's got a lot of spiky stuff in it. Now, I'm not putting very much on, but I'm going to spread it out and then just give it a little bit of a twist. I don't have to make a, a perfect dubbing noodle here because I want those guard hairs to jump out. Okay, a few of them are sticking out. I'm going to take Velcro, just touch it a couple times and any guard hairs that were thinking about it, now they can jump out too. Now we'll go forward with oval tinsel. And we're going to tie this off on the bottom 
for the same reason. I've done, done pretty good. I've saved about an eye length of bare hook shank behind the eye. Now for the soft hackle you can mix and match again. You can use that uh, hen hackle. You can use a partridge feather. Or you can use just about any feather that you like the markings on. Ideally you prefer something that's soft, but this one has such good speckling. Yeah, it makes a good set of legs. But let's go ahead and use the partridge feather. This is farther down along the, the partridge skin, so this is a little bigger feather. Double check that the soft hackles are going to be an appropriate length. And then we're going to come up to the tip and get it prepared and then see how long the hackles are at that point. Looking pretty good. You want them to be, you know, the length of the body, maybe a little bit longer. So I've got this thing curved down. make a couple of turns and then let's fold that back and get an anchor wrap either on the top of it or just in front of it but enough to lock it in so that this feathers in there tight now I got a nice long handle or you can use hackle pliers but I only want a few legs so I really only need to get, oh, well, look at that. This one's looking good, so let's salvage it. There, I re-separated it, so I've got a little bit of stem to tie on. Alright, now they're starting to splay out, so from that point, one turn. And that's enough. Fairly sparse. This partridge is very soft. It's hard to beat for soft tackle. Now that I got them spread out, I'm going to bring my thread back over them a little bit. So that would be a good looking head on the fly, a little small, but that leaves room to tie our wing. Now, you see these tied with duck quills, and you need a match set, and then a match set of feathers, matched slips. They're beautiful, beautiful flies, but it takes a lot of practice to get good at it. So in the meantime, we're going to take a shortcut, use a different material and a little different technique, but it will help you get the hang of what it takes to tie duck quills. This is a turkey feather. Hasn't been lacquered or anything. What I'm going to do is cut out a piece of feather that estimated about twice the width of the wing that you want. Now you see how those are kind of curved naturally. I'm going to kind of finesse this and work it against the grains until they're closer to square. There we go. Now we're just going to fold this feather and the crease is on the top. But this is going to give us two wings curved against each other. We won't get the perfect beautiful 
curve at the back, but it'll still be a good looking wet fly. Set it up so it's a little bit short of the length of your tail. Come around with a loose wrap, and then at least pull towards you while you're pinching that material. And there you got a wing. Take a look and see if it's right on top. This material's forgiving enough that I could unwrap those things and tie it in again if it's if it's too short or if it's cockeyed. But this one turned out pretty good. Some firm wraps. I'm going to shape the head and make sure I've got everything covered up ready for a whip finish yeah, you can see my fingers moved I didn't get it as long as I set it up so that's why you tie a half a dozen of these instead of just one you learn from one to the next now a drop of head cement will give this thing the classic lacquered head look. There you have it. Gold ribbed hair's ear wet flying.